In this tutorial, I'm going to look at two examples of procedural animation, and I'm going to talk a little about event-driven programming. In my examples of procedural animation, the monkey is animated moving in the Z direction, the slider affects the speed of the animation, and the monkey is animated spinning about the z-axis. Again, the slider affects the speed of the animation. The starting point for this tutorial is the project that I made in a previous tutorial where I linked a slider to the z-location of a monkey. By changing one function, the set translation function, changing it to the set rotation Euler function, we can link the slider to the Z rotation of the monkey. Going back to the original project, where the slider is linked to the monkey's Z location, I want to quickly go over the event driven programming. Looking at the code, when you create an input element of type range, you create a new slider object. All slider objects have a property value that changes when the slider moves. And all slider objects have a method on input that is called when the slider moves. At the same time, the WebGL software in your web browser is using the hardware in your graphics card to render the 3D data from the JSON file at a rate of typically 60 frames per second. My rate has dropped to about 45 frames per second because I'm running screen capture software at the same time. Because the 3D data is not changing, it appears that nothing is happening. But the frames are being rendered, and as soon as I move the slider, the 3D data changes and the monkey appears to move. As I have said before, it is this line that changes the 3D data, in this case, the Z location of the monkey. Looking at the example of procedural animation, the same set translation function is used to change the Z location of the monkey, the variable i is linked to the slider's value. But there is no use of the onInput method that is called when the slider changes. So what event causes the 3D data to change? Well, this line sets up an interval timer. For those familiar with the Blender game engine, it's like an always sensor in pulse mode. The set interval function will call the my timer function at regular intervals. The interval will be 20 milliseconds, which means the my timer function will be called 50 times every second. So the function myTimer is called 50 times a second, but what does it do? Well, it uses the variable i. I did try and think of a more meaningful name for the variable, and I just thought of one as I make the tutorial, and I'm going to change the name of the variable to z. The first line in the function uses the plus equals operator. It takes the current value of z 
and adds this onto it. Skipping the next line, this line moves the monkey to the new value of z, but what has this done to the z location? The value of the slider is divided by a thousand, so quite a small amount is added to z, but it is added 50 times a second. When the slider is at its maximum value of a hundred, a hundred divided by a thousand is a tenth, so one tenth of a blender unit is added to the z location 50 times a second. When the slider is at its minimum value of zero, zero divided by a thousand is zero, so nothing is added to the z location and the monkey does not move. With anything other than a zero value, z continually increases heading towards infinity. This line resets z when z passes a certain value, in this example, three blender units, it is reset, in this example, to minus three blender units. Comparing the monkey moving to the monkey spinning, the main difference is the use of the function set rotation Euler in the spinning and the use of set translation in the moving. A better name for the variable i would be zrot, an abbreviation for z rotation. The angle of rotation in the function is measured in radians, not degrees. There are two pi radians in 360 degrees. This line resets i back to zero when the angle reaches 360 degrees. So this code animates the monkey head spinning without using the animation module or any keyframes in the Blender file. For basic animation, it gives an alternative technique which may be useful for some applications. That's the end of the tutorial. I'll put the files used in the tutorial for you to download at my website. To visit my website, click the eye icon in the top right hand corner. If you'd like to subscribe, click the stickman. If you'd like to sponsor my channel, click the patron link. Thanks for watching and goodbye.